This lesson is intended to teach pattern making to a second grade classroom. Here are the objectives that we plan to meet by the end of the lesson. For this lesson, you will need pattern blocks, paper, pencils, erasers, and crayons. We are going to teach you about the shapes that you will use for your pattern. The first shape is a hexagon. It has six equal sides. In the pattern blocks, it is yellow. It is the biggest shape you will be working with. The second shape is a trapezoid. It has four sides and two of those sides are parallel. In the pattern blocks, it is red. It is the second largest shape you will be working with. The third shape is a diamond, also called a rhombus. It has four equal sides and the opposite sides are parallel. In the pattern blocks, it is blue. The fourth shape is a square. It has four equal sides and every angle is a right angle. In the pattern blocks, it is orange. The opposite sides are parallel. The fifth and smallest shape is a triangle. It has three equal sides. In the pattern blocks, it is green. For your project, you will be creating patterns. You must use three different shapes. Here are a few examples. The first example has a hexagon, a square, and a diamond. This is what it would look like if you continued to make your pattern. The second example has a trapezoid, a triangle, and a diamond. This is what it would look like if you continued to make the pattern. The third example has a triangle, a hexagon, two squares, and a trapezoid. This is what it would look like if you continued to make the pattern. For your project, you must use at least three different shapes. For the example, we used a triangle, a diamond, a trapezoid, and a hexagon. You are able to use as many shapes as you want, but the more you use, the longer it will take you to make. You also must be cautious because your patterns must line up with each other. You must fill your whole paper. Some of the shapes may not fit perfectly, so you will have to trace the part of the shape that does fit on the paper. For the example, we used a triangle, a diamond, a trapezoid, and a hexagon. This is what it would look like if you continued to make the pattern. It will eventually fill the entire paper. The next step is to trace your shapes. Be careful when tracing because it needs to be exact in order for your patterns to line up. Trace each shape one at a time. Have your pattern set up nearby so you can look at it for help. After you have completed one of your patterns, you should do another pattern just like it to line up with the first.
This is what your paper should look like when you're finished tracing your lines. The outline of the shapes should cover the whole paper. Once you have completed tracing your patterns, you should color it in. Here is an example of one of our patterns colored in. This is what it would look like if you continued coloring. After you have finished coloring in your entire paper, trace your pencil lines in black crayon. This is what it should look like when you finish tracing your lines. After you have traced your lines in black crayon, make sure your name is on the back of the paper and turn it in. 